folks, I know season two of Power Book 3 Raising Canaan is over, but the content isn't start isn't stopping because I had told you all we had some more stuff coming for you. And finally, finally, I get a chance to talk to the very talented Polly the Singer, who is the character Zisa from season two. Polly, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Everybody tuning in right now. Kick back, relax. We're going to have a good time talking about uh, not only her character, but in case some of you all did not know, she's truly an artist. I know she played the character uh, that was an artist, but she truly is one. So we're going to learn a little bit about that and talk a little bit about uh, all things Ziza uh, come uh, with season two. Uh, But yeah, I definitely want to start off by saying um, how has the experience been for you uh, being a part of the Power family? And although your character's gone, you know the drill you're still and will always be a part of the power family so how has this whole journey been for you um i'm trying to think of a good word to just describe the whole thing i can't think of one yeah it's it's just been um something that i've been asking for and um, imagining myself doing for so long. Uh, I had written down um, an affirmation about being in a show I'm really proud of because I've done a lot of acting work, but power, the power universe. And so being in it, I was just really proud of myself. Yeah. And proud to say that I was on that show. It also fits the demographic I um, am excited to talk to with my message. So. That's really the big thing, is that I feel like the the the, the visibility and the outreach of this show specifically was really in line with where my purpose and my mission is focused. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, and um, well deserving. Congratulations. Uh, mm-hmm. and 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 even for your time on the show, uh, what an amazing impact. There's a lot of questions I have for it. I definitely want to ask some of my personal questions. I know the fans had some questions that they wanted to ask. Um. But yeah, upon the announcement, I mean, when you when 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 the headline, and I forgot what outlet broke the the uh, in terms of the new castings for the season, but I remember your name and Latoya Luckett, and I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah. so so y'all y'all breaking some real like artistry this season, like y'all 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 get ready to to not only ha- tell a good story and, and and all of the you know the, the the crime and the drama and whatnot, but we're about to have some real performances this season. Um, what was sort of that emotion seeing your name um, in this cast of crew who are absolutely talented? And I would love to know what type of discussions you've had with some of these other folks. I mean, when you talk about Latoya Luckett, icon, legend, but being in the same vicinity with her is chilling. Ugh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't. I didn't do any scenes with Latoya. Oh. Uh, the the image of us all in yeah. the same casting. That was enough <laughs> because I just feel like it's a uh, it's definitely a, um, a, um, a representation of your of the hard work that you've done. Um, yeah. I mean, the hard work that I've done. I feel like uh, being in a place where I feel like other people have done really hard work and gotten um, in spaces that are really important for their careers. It's kind of like anyone that you're around who's doing something you want to do that shows that you're closer to it. So being doing what I'm what I want to do and being shown that I'm close to these people doing the things that I would love to be doing and like expect to be doing um, was very affirming. Yeah. Um, and then I oh, I did meet um, Omar Dorsey. Yes, Omar Dorsey. I knew he was going yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was, um, he's just an amazing person. Like, he was just so fun to be around, and he was so, like, uh, his character is so funny. And so, he just seeing that element of his character and seeing how it's kind of in him, too, and the way that, you know, he, like, uh, he's cool. He likes to party. He likes to go out. And (laughs) so, it was just really fun. Yeah, it was just really fun being on set with him. It's just cool being on set with people that you've only seen in um, capacity where they're either um, putting on for you know, like uh, a publication or they're putting on um, other emotions and like putting themselves in other spaces to be another character and then seeing them really as their authentic self is always cool. 
Yeah, I you know I tell people and, and like my 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 fans ask about like how is it to be around um you know the cast and I'm like you know they 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 put on personas and and and, and some of these characters are larger than life but they're humans and they're absolutely uh very much of the type of people you want to be around because of the energy that a lot of the cast gives off and just this camaraderie amongst family and 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 being around other folks um especially in 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 terms of the culture like it's 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 something special and i just couldn't even imagine you know i get like one off like every year or something but you get to be on set over and over and you all build this relationship this friendship and 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 then you start to learn from one another and then next thing you know you got a new brother or sister for the rest of your life and i, I already know omar has got to be a trip I, he's a, he's an amazing person got a chance to talk to him so i know that was love <laughs> yeah definitely yeah so, so I, I again bringing up the fact that you are an artist. Uh, one, I want to make sure that we overly promote that you have a show coming up November twenty ninth in New York. Um, uh, and and I think your introduction on the show pretty much proved that like there's a game changer in terms of the new artist that Lulu is now after, uh, which I thought was a really strong introduction. Vocals is super strong, gave me chills. Um. But uh, could you could you talk me through the moment that the the first time that uh, you realized that you had this talent and um, sort of sort of just coming into your own? Yeah, wow. Uh, you just like also made me think of something. I feel like you keep doing this where I'm like, wow, I never thought about that. That's cool that he introduced me on the show, but he also kind of introduced me as a singer in real life because oh. uh, I hadn't been introduced that way as a vocalist on something with like that much visibility wow that's so cool i forgot the question <laughs> <laughs> that that's dope i didn't even think of it that way either that's really dope um shout out to michael mays that's that's the homie um but yeah uh uh w- w- upon starting your career uh in and being an artist but also uh really coming into your own when you knew that you had this talent oh uh I, I think my mom had a lot to do with it when I was young. She was always just hyping me up so much. Like anything that I would do, she'd be like super, super hyping me up um, in terms of art and performance and stuff like that. She was like, if you want to be a, a – cause she, she was um, a dancer. Well, she is. She's a dancer. Um, she's an actor, theater person, uh, composer, choreographer. Mm. She does like all these things, and I think that seeing me want to do those things, she was like, "Yes, you know, like <laughs> yes, yes, go," um, because she didn't get to uh, actualize them in the way that she thought, probably because of raising me by herself. Yeah. So um, that was really epic for me. Whenever I would do something, I would feel that way. So I think I, I like would watch. I remember watching like a, I think it was a J Lo music video, and mm. seeing some some essence of her performance and being like, "Oh." oh, I want to captivate people that way. Yeah. And uh, at first it was very like, I want to be famous. I just want people to see me and see how cool and like fun I am. And then I got into like real acting technique and I, I changed the, I had a, a coach, Anthony Apes, and he just completely um, opened up this space for me to tap into seeing seeing visibility as a an artist, as a tool to... Um, widen perspectives and let people relate so you know if you're playing a role and if you have really powerful technique you can actually get people to believe you're that person in the role and then when you're acting out those things from that walk of life that's the writer's story being told and the writer represents however many of people it's your story being told it's so many people's story being told and so when people see that then they can uh uh, gain ideas about life and like open their mind to things and instead mm-hmm. of being, oh you know all people who do this are like that then they see this and they're like oh I didn't know that people who look like that could also be this or people mm-hmm. who had that past could also like the reason that they had that past I didn't get it until I saw this and um, so then I realized acting is like actually philanthropy mm. in that way and so I always wanted to be a philanthropist too I was like whatever I'll be I'll be famous and then I'll have my my you know uh world um betterment space on the side 
And at one point I was like, no, like I am world betterment. I am the change I want to see. So I can't be an actor. I can't be an actor. This industry's just like, uh, it's demons. It's, it's life sucking. It's like always portraying the wrong things. It's, and then, I, and then I had another revelation where I was like, oh no, that's exactly where you need to be to broadcast these kinds of, um, um, feelings because you know say I go into just wellness and it was just like to be like a guru basically mm. knowledge like let me just spread this knowledge and I'll go here and I'll go to meditational spaces and I'll go here and I'll speak about it and I'll do this and da, da, da. and I was like but I don't really want to do that like I like acting and I like singing and I like dancing and those people who are going to those things being like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get healed I'm gonna get the new thing new information I need. I'm gonna get the new perspectives I'm gonna go to this retreat those aren't necessarily the people who need a new message to say you know that there's a whole other power within you yeah change and heal yourself so I thought I was like oh at one point I was like oh actually if I'm in this space I can better broadcast um, this new idea without being seen as someone in that world yeah now that totally makes sense and i mean that's powerful uh you know and, and wow. even in the, the the strides you've already made in acting is already super notable um and and to really make that kind of selfish is um it's something that people don't really grasp so early so i think that's a really beautiful thing and and um i've been a fan of yours thus far and now i just got a, a, a new set of eyes on you to kind of see where you take uh your career but yet as you said being used so, sort of as a vessel where, where do you take your life and your messages and your teachings and going forward and um you know really spreading that love and, and that and that vibrant um energy around to folks who needs it as you said that's that's really really powerful um love that love that a lot it's also not to say that um, it's completely selfless either. Like it makes me, it definitely feeds your ego to help people. Yeah. That's maybe something people don't like to admit or like can't tell that that's what's going on necessarily, but it's not completely selfless. Like I want to see people happy because that makes me happy. Yeah. And I, don't I, think, I, I Like I don't think selfish is a bad word, you know? I think everything starts in the self. So it's like mm. noticing yourself so that you can notice other people noticing where you need to heal so that you can see other people for the for the whole self and not what like might be happening because they might have not access their healing to something or right that's right no, that's and that's true because like even for myself I, I have a sense of peace upon helping others and I, I, I yeah I I feel like the word selfish is been stigmatized to be a negative thing. In a moment, you start to say, well, I'm going to work on myself or, you know, I'm working on my inner peace. These things are a reflection of working on yourself or your own space and your own, you know, energy around you. Uh, that's kind of deemed as a positive thing. But the moment you say selfish is kind of like, no, 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 no. That's that's a negative thing. Although it is, like you said, it's the same thing. That's yeah. Right. Man. I think the word people probably mean to use is like a. Uh narcissistic <laughs> and stubborn you know stuff, yeah. yeah there's other words you know yeah like how sometimes selfish can mean just not being aware of other people but at the end of the day that's just not being aware of yourself that's that there we go there we go hey, i'm gonna have a lot of things to bite off this interview i'm gonna just have to listen back and it's like take this in bro this is the affirmation you need today <laughs> and for all the fans too so uh, that's okay. So, so, so talking about Ziza now, now, okay, okay. There's a couple of questions. I, I want to start what I feel is one of the hottest questions everyone wanted to ask. So okay. we, we obviously know that Lulu in the previous season had this relationship with Jessica and Jessica was clearly out for herself. And, and you, you can say she was kind of out for self, uh, for uh, famous, but truly the moment she got an opportunity, she was gone to California introducing you now the new artist the, the 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 new true talent and i think that again by your introduction it made it very clear there was a night and day difference from anybody that he had worked with you know um and and i think that at this point now we start to say okay now what's 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 going to be her whole position in in terms of the studio with crown and and, and with lou so my, my question to you is was Ziza an opportunist or was she really loyal and really about that life 
And when I mean that life, you know, all the things that Lulu was into that she witnessed and and kind of was like, all right, so now what? Even when Crown was disposed, she's like, okay, so what are we going to do? Which I thought was a really dope scene. But was this, again, was this just her 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 eye in, in terms of what it means to make it in the business? Or was this just truly who she was? Um. <clears throat> I don't know exactly necessarily what the writers had planned, but because I I took it a kind of differently uh, in some ways. Yeah. Some, like what we talked about, I was, I was like, oh, okay, and I would do it maybe in a little bit of a different way. But overall, I think she really wanted uh, to make it as a recording artist, as a as a musician. She like she wanted to be, you know, in the lights like Beyonce style and. <laughs> uh, she knew she had what it takes, what it took. So she was, when this happened, she was like, all right, whatever, like he's connected. So I'm, I'm not going to say no to a blessing and then realized that she actually was into him Mm. and then was like, Oh, actually, I actually fuck with this guy a lot because I think when the, um, the body thing happened when she was like, Oh, what are we going to do? I think at first she was like, Oh fuck. But then she was like, Nope. Like, this is a different part. This is not music. Like, this is my heart. Mm. So I really like that. And I like that for his character too, because I feel like it was very superficial before. Mm. That. So I definitely did not want to play it superficial. So I don't think the way I played it. No, she was not out for clout. She was out for like really being a good artist. And she ended up falling for Lou in the process. Yeah. Uh, to, to be clear, and and I and I, I feel like I can say this, uh, in 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 all respect to the writers and in all respect to the actors, I feel like the writers do a job in creating a character, and I feel like the actors make the, those characters their own, especially in power. Everybody gets a sense of what this character is. I mean, uh, um, I'm about to call him Marvin, but uh, <laughs> London is the main person would tell you that like, Hey, they tell you, you know, this, this and that. And I just go in there and I kind of do my thing. Lulu has, uh, uh, Malcolm has said the same thing. So like, by all means, I mean, you're, you're following suit and saying like, Hey, I, I, I got an idea of what they wanted it to be, but you went in there and made it yours. So that's why you can speak to what you feel that character is. Cause that character is yours. You make that character yours. That's, that's what all about what the, the performances are. And that's why we love power because we do get like that gap of like, Oh, the writers maybe wanted this, but the actors kind of went this way. And that leaves all the fans wondering like, okay, which way are we going to go? You know, what, what's going to happen to unpredictability because they're truly uniquely your characters that we just follow behind. So um, that's interesting. And I'm super glad as well. It wasn't superficial and i remember saying this like episode one or two i'm like i trust the writers enough to know that they're not they're not just going to give just another superficial character which you know jessica kind of was jessica was there for clout and then and once it ran out she was out of town you know i was like okay so y'all gonna do that season two heck no this is gonna definitely be, be different this is no chance it's gonna happen the same way again so and and surely by the end of the season that was proven to be right um one of my favorite scenes of yours, which it, it, it even gives me chill because it's so sadistic. If you ask me, <laughs> episode eight, wait, when wait, you wait. all okay, yes, episode eight, episode eight, when you Ziza and Lulu roll up into DJ Mo Craze in right. the parking lot, and it's. And apparently, I mean, and, and Lulu is, you know, a, a pretty chill looking guy, very calm demeanor. And he's just like, hey, you know, it's my artist. What's good with, 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 with the song being played? And, you know, DJ Mo trying to play it off all easy until Lulu pulls out the gun and says, listen, this is the business. Play the song. The moment that you sit back and immediately laugh when he pulls out the gun was like, oh, she's one of those. <laughs> she's one of those. Was like in the background, like, oh, I like this. I, could you, could you sort of narrate that scene in terms of what the character and what the last means in that moment, uh, that dire moment? Because you know, it's power. No one's safe, and this could have been the end of DJ Mo. We're sitting here like, oh, what's going to happen? You just kind of sitting back laughing. Uh, yeah, could you, could you, could you talk me through the, the, the sort of the narration of what's going through the character's mind here? Um, yeah, she, she was thinking this, 
this dude has been trying to play my man and there's no there's no way he's going to be able to do that because of how how powerful my man is but then also it's exciting to me that he's done what he's done because now i get to <laughs> now i get to see him pay for it mm. um i think she has that like i it's so weird to talk cuz i don't i can i can remember feeling like that like but now I, I've worked through a lot of stuff, so I don't feel like anymore. <laughs> can, can I can I say, as a young, immature man in a part of, in, a, in a part of my life, there was nothing more than doing something completely reckless, and your girl's like, "That's my boy." Yeah, and you just like, "Yep," and I'm gonna do it ten times more if I'm gonna keep getting this type of affirmation. That's why yeah. I was like, "Oh, she's one of them." That's why I was like, "Oh, this gives me chills because." It does yeah, come off like, like she's loyal, but like it. this is reckless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was just accessing that. Uh, she's nineteen. She's supposed to be like around nineteen. So, um, and I'm thirty-one. So I was thinking back, and um, I I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna pay for what you did. And also, <laughs> it's, it's it was just giving very much Bonnie and Clyde. Like I was thinking about when you're super sprung off somebody, like you really will do a lot of things for them that you might not do uh ordinarily so yes yeah. it, it was just very electrifying that feeling it's also her music like that he's that she's you know trying to get that they're, they're trying to get him to play yeah so the fact that her man is going so hard for her music is also like a super turn on for her and she's like she's like wow he's going so hard and so i'm gonna go hard you know and like this is gonna get this is going to make it happen. Like, this is what we have to do. Like, I yeah. thought I would, you know, make a billion records. And here I am. I made one record. And you just put a gun to a dude and, like, we get a song on the radio. Like, I'm not, <laughs> like she was kind of in, in that vibe. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> oh, man. A bunch of things came through my head. And I said, I was like, yeah, I remember those days, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not pulling guns on anybody, but I remember those days. You know, you you like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pull up on Cuz when I see him, and then you want to make sure that it's super visible. You want to make sure your girl see that, cause that's all she's gonna talk about, and that's all everybody else gonna talk about. <laughs> uh, that's that's so funny. Uh, you made me think of something else, and it just click quickly flew out of my mind. Oh, oh yeah, I know what's gonna say. Um, the performances again. I talked about the first scene, but the first time you heard your voice in the performance, especially when it played on the radio, but the first time you heard your voice on an episode um, in a performance on the show, uh, what was sort of your emotion? And did you make any calls or were you witnessing this with any of your peers uh, the first time it happened? What was those emotions like? Um, okay. Yes. The first time I, I actually had a watch party, never had a watch, Dope. but it was a watch party. This is also why this is so interesting and like why I'm so proud of this uh, happening because I, this was the first time I was releasing music that I was like really proud of also. The last music I released, I released it because I was like, it was like eight years ago maybe, I was like, I just have to put this out. If I don't, I'll never put it out. But yeah. I wasn't like, oops, I wasn't like, yes, this is such great music. So this is the first time I was like, yes, like I feel the great music, it's there. Maybe these, these aren't the pinnacle songs, but this is like, I, I can see it, I can smell it. And, um, so having being introduced in song that way and having my music come out, I was like, I have to have a watch party. So I had a watch party slash listen party. I played some songs from my album and um, I had it at um, this place downtown that my um, boyfriend's friend like runs the space downstairs and they have this gorgeous uh like huge TV with these big speakers and you can run out the space. I'm going to actually find the name of the place so we can plug it because absolutely they helped me out a lot um and we had like dinner and we had drinks we had like little mushroom chocolates we put <laughs> little tiny mushroom like psilocybin chocolates with little strawberries and we had dandelion wine and um vegan jackfruit uh bidia tacos like I don't do things really small. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. It was so it was so amazing. And to get in there, the door is is a um is a um a shelf, and you, yeah. you 
spray bottle on the shelf and you like spray the spray bottle and it like opens into this room. So yeah. it's like in. So it's really cool. Um, so yeah, the first time I heard my voice, I think it was, they put so much effects on my voice and I'm used to hearing it with less effects that I was like, whoa, like this is what it sounds like on TV. You know, like this is what they do. And then I've also heard Haley sing in real life and then heard her sing on the show. And I, and the effects, like you can tell the difference, you know, it sounds great, but it's just like a yeah. very different sound. So hearing that, I was like, whoa, like I really, this is like interesting. I've never heard myself sound like this. Um, what's cool about hearing yourself, though, is that your brain can tell what balance, what needs balancing out in your uh. system by hearing your voice back to you. So I wonder, like, what chemical synapses my brain was doing by hearing it be under so much different uh, levels. Yeah. Uh, but overall, I was just geeked. I was so excited. I was like, wow, this is it. I'm... I'm out here singing on, uh, like I'm out here merging my careers. That's yeah, cool. yeah, that's that's dope. And again, congratulations and well deserved. And I'm truly looking forward to uh, to see more of your work, to hear more of your work, but also just to kind of talk to you too. Like it, it got such like really good and important messages. I feel really, really much at peace. I like really yeah. do. This is a <laughs> this is an interview for you, and I'm like sitting here, kind of sitting back. I I I've I have frequently reached down. I don't know if anybody can tell. I keep wanting to lean my seat back. I kind of just wanted to just sit back and take it. I was like, oh, shit, I'm doing the interview. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Got to ask some questions here. <laughs> That's funny. Good. I love that. I'm going to make a little meditation tape one of these days. Oh, uh-huh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Podcasting is uh, uh, in your uh, immediate future, if you ask okay. me. Um a guest for a while because I have too much going on. <laughs> hey, that good. That's good. That's good to know. <laughs> uh, uh, two other questions I want to ask before we wrap up for the day. Uh, one being obviously um, your uh, death scene in here, which uh, you know, it's sad because you brought up something earlier and, you know, knowing that Ziza was loyal and lo- knowing that she was just, um, you know, in love with this guy and trying to support him and really helping him a lot more. And I think the effects of this relationship definitely carries into next season because, um, you know, why she tried to give him what he wanted. He wanted to get out of the game. He wanted to focus on music. He wanted somebody that was serious. Jessica wasn't. Ziza comes in. Every other question is want to get in the studio, want to get in the booth. Let's do something, you know, and and, and they're like, okay, fine. Do you want me to relax you? What, what what's it going to be? But let's let's make something productive here. And you know, he goes about it his Lulu ways, where he feels like you know he's got to stay in his shell and you know operate in his own, and frequently steps on his own toes. Um, <laughs> but um, sort of as a bi- definitely an innocent bystander being killed by one of the. Um, Italians here. Uh, what was what was your thoughts knowing about your write off? Um, looking at the scene and uh, to kind of really compact this question is, uh, what more story do you think Ziza had if she was still around? Uh, well, I guess the, the first thing, how did I feel with the write offs? Um, I mean, I knew I was already. That was like the amount of episodes I was told I would be in at the beginning, so I, I kind of knew. Um, I just really was, I was like, you know, uh, if it's meant for me to continue on the show, I'm grateful, and if there's something bigger for me, then I'm grateful to be, you know, um, terminated. But, yeah, it was it was crazy to read. I think I was sad for Lou, honestly. I was like, damn, like, he just found all this gold, like found love, passion, um, career, money. Yeah. And then just like pow pow and it's gone. It's like he's been working so hard. Like he just finished up, like doing this stuff. He's about to leave. He's about to really like go. I was like so crushed for him, honestly. Yeah. Um, but it was really fun. It was a fun scene. Um I think it's good that they show that kind of stuff sometimes because it's really not a game out here, you know? I don't think people should leave 
with fear mm. ever. There's also a side of it that's like your his intuition might have been telling him like to get out of the game earlier, but he was like, no, I got to do X, Y, Z. And so it's something to learn from, follow your intuition. Yeah. Uh, big, big consequences have high stakes. It makes you want to do different things more. Power. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then... Was other was there other parts of that question? So and 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 if she was still around, what what what, oh, what yeah. more story do you think she had to tell? Yes, um, I think that she would have blown up as an artist. I think she would have blown up, and I think her and Lou would have gone really far together, and probably other things would have tried to like break them up, you know, and like it would have been one of those uh, R and B love stories. <laughs> Um, but I think it's cool. I think it's cool that he's going to be able to get to explore different women and have that with someone else and, um, have been really prepared. Now he's done it with Cecil so he can have, um, more like mind to know what to do for the next time. And that he's really seen that someone can love him. I hope he did, you know, feel that, um, and more diversity, be with more diverse women. <laughs> oh man we'll see that's gonna be a big question going forward where does this tragedy take him um and and will he learn and i, I think that is kind of metaphorical because i, I think it's yeah. safe to say that everything he wanted was in a person that was right in front of him and did right. he take it for granted was he blinded or was he for whatever reason just um unwilling to let go of his past i mean we see marvin going through therapy will he learn something from his brother through that to learn that there is a sense of of having to continuously work on yourself. You don't always, we none of us all have it figured out. And yeah. at times you see Lou and he feels like he has it all figured out until he's humbled multiple times in this season. So it's going to be interesting to see um, what happens going forward. So Miss Paulina, I told you I wanted to make sure that we, had a, a moment to talk about things you have coming up, obviously uh, shows and appearances. Uh, could you could you tell the audience now uh, where uh, folks can keep an eye out for you? Yes, um, I have a new, I'm gonna be on, I don't know if I can talk about this fully yet, so I'm gonna be discreet, but I'm gonna be on an animated show that's a version of a show that we grew up with. And I'm gonna Ooh. be playing a character that, um, most of us remember. I honestly didn't remember her when I But when I saw her, I was like, okay. So that's fun. That's exciting. Um, more details soon. I'm doing a show in New York City at SOBs on November 29th. And I am still releasing my album in pieces, which I love. Like, so unorthodox and alternative. I love that for me. I didn't know how it was going to work out, but I'm like really... I love how it feels. So there's yeah. three three more songs on the album to be released. Plus, I have this interlude that I couldn't upload by itself because it's too short. So that's coming. And uh, I'm writing shows too. I'm I'm writing shows with my writing partner, and we're in we're talking to people, and uh, you might see some of those. Out there soon as well. Awesome. Well, oh, you know, Jam Planet, Jam Planet. I have an event series called Jam Planet, and I'm looking for spaces. So, if anybody has a space in New York City that they would like to host my wellness based open mic slash jam session, it's really dope. I have tons of footage um, to show whoever, and I really would love to work with you. Love it. Love it. Well, all of the information will be in the description below where to find her upcoming projects and so on social medias folks reach out to her show her love as i said in the beginning although zisa has been murdered in the power universe paulina will forever be a part of the community so y'all make sure y'all show her love let her know what you thought about her time on the show keep an eye out for all other sorts of projects coming down the pipeline. Pauline, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm so glad that we got to do this. Thank you.
Thank you. I'm so grateful. This was really fun. You're you're a beautiful person, a, a beautiful soul, um, and and a, and, a, and a voice of an angel. And um, I did not know that this was going to turn to an interview where I actually wanted to just be distracted and sit back and just listen to you. <laughs> kind of caught me off guard, and that's why I kept saying, cool. "Nope, sir, nope." <laughs> this is an interview, <laughs> but we'll definitely have to do it again soon. That's for sure. That's Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. So. Well, folks, jump in the comments, show some love. Let us know your thoughts about the thing said today and stick around because for sure we got more power content coming very soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you back once again.